We tend to daydream while we're driving to work. We daydream during conversations and we daydream while we're on conference calls. But what if you're called on during the meeting and you lost track where the conversation is or you didn't hear the question that they asked you? We've all been there and we're quick to instantaneously pull out a lie to cover ourselves. So let's look at the ways that we can stay present during these important conversations. I'll be the first to tell you that I'm absolutely guilty of daydreaming during a meeting and normally that's because I have no speaking part in the meeting or the meeting is not servicing my position in any specific way. There are so many different things that can pull our thoughts in different directions at work. So let's look at the reasons why you would start to daydream at work and what you can do about it. The first and most obvious is during a conference call when you have a lifeless speaker. You know that one person that speaks very slowly for 30 minutes straight. And it's no wonder people have checked out, but here are some tips to get you through these type of speakers. During the discussion, what I normally do to keep myself engaged is to start looking up the speaker to find out what their title is, which business group they belong to, and how large their organization is that they run. I listen for better practices of something that's being discussed in the conversation and how it's going to serve my executive and myself. Of solving a similar issue if it presents itself down the road, or if they mention a working partner, I write their name down as well and I look them up. I'm listening throughout the meeting, but I'm not allowing myself to wander off. So what did I do with that boring speaker? I took away not only the discussion, but I kept my mind busy focusing on information that I could capture that would benefit my executive. And it kept me present during the conversation. Sometimes we tend to wander off when something just isn't right at work. It could be that you're uninspired at work or things have slowed down quite a bit. And those can be significant reasons why you wander off because there's nothing challenging you. The best way to address this is to go back and remember what you once loved about your position or start creating a position that you want. Just because you were hired to do specific tasks doesn't mean that you can't incorporate new tasks that bring you value and a new sense of direction. And sometimes we wander off in dreamland for the opposite reason of something happy happening in our life. Like you're getting married or your son or daughter will be welcoming their first child or maybe you finally saved up enough money to buy your first home. Those events can definitely fill our minds when we're at work, but a great tip is during your breaks or at lunch, write down your thoughts of everything you need to do. This would clear your mind as you put it down in writing, but if it's easier for you to just email yourself or to send yourself a text, do it this way if it works better for you. We've all heard of the vision board and it's been said that the vision board is a great tool to channel your thoughts during the day. And when you have a vision board at home, it satisfies the vision and your motivation towards that one thing that you really want. I've never done a vision board before, but maybe I'll test the theory. Another great way to stop your mind from wandering off is to keep your mind super busy. So there isn't any real room to drift away. Let me give you an example how I keep myself super busy. I'm up at 4 a.m. in the morning editing YouTube videos. Then it's breakfast time and off to work. When I arrive at work, I'm already organized from the night before to complete any unfinished work from the day before. Before I jump into my emails and start to manage my executive. After work, I like to go for a run or jump on my spin bike to shake off that stress that I carry throughout the day. So you see, a full day like this, there's no real time for my brain to wander off. I love being super busy and productive and I also love my time to relax when it's time to relax. And lastly, and probably one of the most important ways to stop from daydreaming is to get enough sleep. If you're only pulling three to five hours a night, that's not enough and you'll definitely be tired and more likely to check out because you're dragging and unmotivated to work. Make it a point that one hour before you go to bed, turn off your computer and the text messages and the phone calls. So you can get seven to eight hours of interrupted sleep. Daydreaming happens to all of us. But too much daydreaming is not good. Find your own way to stay engaged, to be more productive so that your mind doesn't wander off during working hours. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you soon.